In DeFi, your money becomes empowered. You can store it, lend it, trade it, zap it, and track it in real time. Yeah, it's kind of like a money game. But at the origin of this is the desire to have more control. And we call this self-custody. Self-custody in DeFi refers to you. Yes, you being 100% in control of your money the same way you are with cash. Except this is digital cash and it's not dependent on a bank or other entity holding it to provide you a digital representation. And this is precisely why blockchain was such a huge innovation, starting with Bitcoin and then Ethereum. So here's what you need to know. DeFi requires you to have an Ethereum wallet like Metamask, Argent, Dharma, Monolith, or any of those. The point is you have a private key, which is kind of like the password to your email. And while others can know your public wallet address, like your email address, you never ever share the private key. Secondly, being in control of your assets means no one can save you. There is no customer support like you'd find at a crypto exchange. And there's definitely no customer support to call when you lose cash on the street. When you own digital cash, the only thing you can do is write down your private key and your wallet seed phrase to back up in a safe place in case you ever lose your device with your wallet, like your laptop or phone. The good thing is you can easily restore your wallet if you do lose your phone, but you can't restore funds that are taken if you inadvertently give up your private keys. Lastly, and here's the good stuff, you can now do, well, pretty much anything with your digital money. And DeFi applications will allow you to do just that. There's a wide range, including trading, lending, borrowing, liquidity providing, options trading, derivatives, and yield farming. And you can do pretty much whatever you want until your agricultural dreams as a child are fully realized. Now, the key takeaway about self-custody is as simple as Andreas Antonopoulos said. Not your keys, not your coins. But with DeFi, we now have applications that let your money work for you. And you can't take advantage of that unless, first off, you're in control, and secondly, you give permission to these new automated money robots called DeFi apps to put your money to work. And that's precisely why we believe DeFi can democratize access to strategies that can grow anyone's wealth, regardless of who you are, where you live, how much or how little money you earn. When you use a DeFi application, there's no sign up with your email and name, there's no ID required, and in most cases, there's no restriction on your geographical location. All you have to do is click a few buttons, and that's it. Similar to a roundabout, you can enter or exit, or deposit or withdraw your money as you please, barring any hard-coded yield farming-like programs that require a lockup to earn rewards. The point is, in DeFi, we've moved beyond exposing the same personal data over and over again, i.e. your name, your email, and your ID, just to gain access to a bank account or crypto exchange. In this world, all you need is one, a compatible wallet, and two, a little bit of courage to click connect. Now, there is a warning to be heard here, which is legacy crypto vendors, namely exchanges, will throw around the term DeFi in new product offerings. And that's because DeFi is a financial space, but it's also kind of a meme. So just be careful there. And if you have to deposit your assets into an exchange to take advantage of a DeFi product, then the exchange has your assets, you don't. It's not permissionless and therefore it's definitely not DeFi. So the key takeaway today is permissionlessnessnessnessness isn't just a feature of DeFi, it's what helps to actually qualify an application as being DeFi, permissionless. You can come and go as you please in DeFi as long as you've got a compatible wallet to do so. And if you can recognize the difference between what's permissionless and what is not, you'll hopefully avoid some bad actors. And as DeFi continues to grow more popular in the coming years, I'm sure we'll see plenty of those. When you use a DeFi application, it is powered by hard-coded rules. And the idea is that these rules provide users with the ability to do powerful but predictable things with their money, like borrow, lend, trade, earn interest, and that kind of thing. In order for users to coordinate such activities and engage with their money peer-to-peer, -peer, it means they have to trust the protocol or the code to do what it's designed to do. Otherwise, it'd be pretty difficult to trust anonymous DeFi users like Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 on Uniswap to sell me some SNX for my ETH. Now, I'm sure Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 is an upstanding citizen. Or can I be sure? 
that's the point. In DeFi, we can leverage trust minimized applications without having to know someone personally or trust them. And what minimizes the trust is removing intermediaries while providing all those involved an economic incentive to cooperate within the rules of the protocol. So let's take a look at that. For example, Pineapple Silly Pony 2345 wants to safely sell SNX for ETH. I want to safety buy SNX with my ETH. Uniswap liquidity providers want to earn trading fees for providing SNX and ETH to the liquidity pool where we trade. And Uniswap developers want a bug-free protocol that works for users so that they can grow the network and benefit from holding the Uni token. Well, that's a lot of people involved. And lastly, there's a real end goal of censorship resistance for this peer-to-peer -peer network, and it's to prevent anyone, no matter how powerful, from owning, corrupting, or blocking access to the DeFi application itself. Top-tier DeFi teams are working to ensure anyone, anywhere in the world, regardless of nationality or oppression of an authoritarian regime, can access this DeFi app as long as they have an internet connection and a compatible Ethereum wallet. And that's a real revolution worth fighting for. The key takeaway is minimizing trust, removing intermediaries, and empowering a censorship-resistant peer-to-peer application may sound like a mouthful, but in reality it's, wait, wait, you know what, it's about as hard as it sounds, and it's really quite difficult to pull off. And this is precisely why you as a user need to understand the difference between something that portrays itself to be DeFi versus what is in fact real DeFi. And living up to these characteristics and working diligently to ensure users can engage with one another in the DeFi application without ever trusting or depending on a third party, yes, the only thing you should trust is the code. There's lots to think about there. While crypto has been around for, well, over 10 years now, the most popular apps until the last year have been centralized crypto exchanges. And these centralized exchanges, like Binance and Coinbase, do millions and millions in trade volume daily, but also require users to submit personal details, like their name, email, and even their physical address. Now, this might seem harmless at first glance, but consider what might happen if someone hacks into the exchange database to find that you own a large amount of crypto. Now a criminal can launch a $5 wrench attack. This is a reference to a meme and another dark joke in the crypto community that all one has to do is buy a $5 wrench to hold someone hostage, since crypto assets can really very easily be transferred from a wallet to another wallet. And sure, maybe this idea of getting hacked and held hostage sounds far-fetched, but the truth is, it's possible. And that's a very scary way to live your life with your data, privacy, and safety dependent on an exchange's operational security to protect the honeypot of data they hold. Especially when you know that so many exchanges have been hacked over the last few years. Qcoin, BlockFi, Binance, just to name a few. So the key takeaway today is that with DeFi, this enormous problem is solved. And why? Because the best way to protect your data is to not allow it to be collected in the first place. And as you've learned in previous DeFi 101 episodes, all that's required in DeFi is a compatible wallet like Metamask to connect. Using such a wallet reveals nothing about you other than your public wallet address, which means your secrets safe with you and with nobody else. You've been watching DeFi 101. Do be sure and check out the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.